now let's look at the spreadsheet application it's called calc and uh, if it's not on your launcher you can type calc uh, in the dash and then it's going to give you LibreOffice uh, Libre calc and uh, let's click on it and it's, uh, it's going to open a, a blank uh, spreadsheet for you so uh, again the menu bar is in the in the panel so 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 you have file edit view insert format tools data window help a bunch of menu item, a bunch of menu items and then you have a toolbar a toolbar inside of the application window and then you have some formatting tools formatting bad but buttons you can use to uh, format some of the stuff and uh, and then you have um, a box here. This box basically indicates where you are inside of this blank sheet, where your active sales is in your blank spreadsheet. For now, it's A1. But if you click on any of the uh, any of the sale, any of the sale, and then it's gonna display the name of the sale. It's a G15. So all the columns, all the different columns inside of the spreadsheet, uh, are numbered, uh, are marked using the, the letters A B C D and then all the different rows are marked using numbers. So every cell has a unique coordinate which is given by the column index G for in this case and then the row index fifteen. And then you have a you have a it's called a function wizard. If you want want to enter functions or want want to enter formulas into your table, into your spreadsheet you can do that. This is one of the commonly used uh, button for for a function, it's a function, and then equal to sign, and then inside here, in, in this, uh, this is called an entry box. It's called an entry box. So if you want to enter something into the G15 box, say if you want to enter something 2015 or something, and then you can just uh, type 2015 here. And uh, after you have uh, typed the numbers in it, and then it's going to display here at the correct location. If you want to, if you want to accept it, you you you, you uh, click on this button then 2015 is going to be registered into the this particular sale if you want to cancel if you don't want to sort of leave this number in there you can just click on cancel then the number here is going to disappear and you don't have to enter your data inside this entry box you can also just uh, uh, double click on a sale and then you can enter some stuff so uh, the layout of the toolbar is kind of similar to the writer application that we talked about before. You have a uh, new, open, uh, store, save, email, and then edit files, export to a PDF, printing, spell check, cut, copy, paste, and uh, redo, undo. But for now it's grayed out because I haven't made any changes to the text. Uh, this button is kind of useful. It's called a chart. We're going to look at uh, this button later on after we have entered some data. Um, uh, these buttons are for formatting the text, the alignment. You see, it's a uh, uh, align left, align right, align center. This this button is for converting numbers to currency, and this number is for converting numbers to percentage. And uh, you have um, some other formatting belt buttons. This is for changing the font and then changing the size of the font. So let's let's um, let's uh, let's try a simple example. Let's try a simple example. Um, we're going to do some kind of budget spreadsheet for a monthly income and a monthly expenditure. So what are we going to do? We're going to uh, enter some text. We are going to enter some text first. So. Um, so so let's let's. Uh, so so let's enter the month the, this, the different month I'm gonna do the budget for so uh, I'm gonna do January and then if you want to sort of uh, jump to the next cell in the same row you use the tab key so so if you tab you're gonna automatically jump to the next cell in the same row and if you want to go back go back to the previous cell in the same row you do shift tab. So tab and shift tab allows you to, uh, to 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 move to move your focus uh, onto different sales uh, in the same row. So for the second sale, I'm going to type February, 
so for each of the the cell can each of the cell can accept three types of data. Uh, the first type of data is text. You can you can just it can, you can just type text into it, and then the second type of data are just numbers. You can type numbers in it, floating point numbers, uh, decimal point numbers, um, integers, any kind of numbers. And the third type of data are called formulas or equations. You can you can enter formulas or equations into a cell. So for now we are just entering text. So January, February, and then March, and then uh, April. Uh, May, June, so I'm just going to enter like a uh, six months. Um, you can see that the text are automatically aligned on the left side of the cell. It's uh, it's left justified. So if you want to change that, you can select the cell that you want to. Uh, suppose I just drag my drag my mouse over the different. Uh, Different different cells that I have texting in them. I can I can if you want to right adjust, you can just click here. And it's going to uh, align all the letters to the right boundary of the cell. And if you want to turn it turn them into a, like a bold face, bold face, just click here. They are going to turn into bold face. And then I'm going to enter some more text, some more in, uh, text. I'm going to give this column called income. I'm going to give income. But I'm gonna do bold. Bold is Control B. Income, and then I wanna jump to the next cell in the same column. I I can do that by typing Enter. If I type Enter, then it's gonna automatically jump to the next cell in the same column. If I wanna go back, if I wanna go back, I do Shift Enter, and then it's it's coming back to the previous cell. Of course, you can also use the arrow key. You can use the arrow key to navigate also. So now the first income category is called salary, and then enter. Second one is pension, and then benefits, and then I have a field called total. It will sum up all, the, all my all my income, and then I'll I'll skip one row, and then I do another text that's uh, expenditure. Control B. I want to make bold expenditure, and then return so the so first one is shopping then TV then leisure then broadband then utilities and then rent I also want to give it total so just sum up the, the total number uh, total amount of expenditure and then I will skip one more uh, one more row. Uh, then I will do a difference, which is basically the difference between my total income and uh, the total expenditure. And uh, to the next row, I'll, I'll, I'll have a field that's called a savings. That's the total amount of savings I I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, do for every month. And then skip one one row. I have a field called savings ratio. It's gonna be some kind of percentage of the difference. So every month I want to put a certain ratio, a certain percentage of my of the difference into my savings. So that's what I will try to do. So now let's try to enter some numbers. My salary. So suppose I have a hypothetical salary that's uh, one thousand two hundred. And then uh, ben pension, say 120, and then benefits 100. So now let's try to sum up the three fields here into the total. So if I click on total, here it displays B6, B6. So so that's the box, the cell, the ID of this particular cell. Uh, for this cell, I want to use a formula that's going to sum up the three fields here. The three cells here. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to click on the function wizard. On the function wizard, on the left side you have a category. So it's going it's it's actually trying to uh, categorize all the different functions into different categories. So if you click on it, 
it's giving you lots of uh, uh, different categories of functions. So you have a database, and it's going to give you a small set of uh, functions. Uh, date and time, small set of functions. Uh, financial, for example, right? And then uh, what I'm going to do is uh, click on mathematical. And then mathematical have uh, ABS taking the absolute value, A cosine, A cosine. But I'm going to navigate down to, to sum. I'll, I'll pick sum. I'll just pick sum. And then I'll click next. So it's giving me it's giving me some kind of choices, uh, and then the formula, the formula down in this white box shows the equals to sum, and then a blank parenthesis. So if you actually look at this uh, entry box inside of the uh, application window, it shows exactly equals to sum, and then parenthesis. So at this at this stage, you have two. Uh, choices. One is to enter the the the, the elements the 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 cell the cell ID here in this box. Another choice is that you can just uh, use your mouse and select the cells that you want to add. So you can just uh, select the cells you want to add. Add. So as you actually drag your mouse across the three cells, you can see you have a function wizard window that's show that's showing you. That's showing you uh, the, the the result of your mouse drag. It's B3 column B5. So so inside of this um, uh, parenthesis, the empty parenthesis now it now has a the content in it. It's B3 column B5. So it's a sum over the the three cells starting from B3 ending with B5. If that's what you wanted, you can just click on OK. OK. So now, so now you get a you get a total you get a total for the summation of these uh, three uh, entries, and you can sort of see the formula here equals to sum b3 colon b5. So so in this particular example, I was using the the function wizard to select the function, and then using the mouse to select the 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 cells I want to uh, use in my in my formula. But but. But you don't really have to use this kind of uh, mouse and uh, function wizard. You can just type. You can just type in this entry box. Type equals to and then sum parenthesis b3 column b5, and it will give you exactly the same result. So, so if you want to accept, accept, then it's gonna go click uh, click the accept button, then it's gonna give you the correct result. So suppose. Uh, so now I have entered a formula into this particular cell. It looks it looks like a number, right? But but in in fact it's actually a formula. Now I want to sort of repeat the same calculations through all the months. So what I have to do is to copy, copy the formula in this particular cell, to this cell, to this cell, this cell, this cell, and this cell. So so calc actually gives you a very quick way for doing the doing the kind of tedious stuff. If you pay attention to the black box around this particular cell, you have a smaller black uh, square at the lower left corner, lower right corner of this cell. This is called the fill handle, and you can actually drag this black box, this little black square. Just a, just a, just a click on it and then drag. You can drag it over all the different cells that you want to copy your formula to. So, so now I have copied the same formula over all the uh, rest of uh, all the rest of five months, and then for now it's zero, 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 uh, because I haven't entered any uh, money amount for the other month. Suppose I want to. Suppose I enter the, the 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 amount for salary for for, for February, and then. Uh, as I enter, as I enter my number, the num the the total the total in the in the in the summation is gonna automatically adjust. The reason that it's actually doing that is because uh, uh, for the default behavior, it's gonna automatically compute the formula based on the numbers that you have entered in the contributing sales. Uh, this behavior is controlled by the in the in the tools menu. If you go down to Sale contents. 
sale contents, and then you have the auto calculate, which is checked, which is checked already, and you can uncheck it, and then you you change the default behavior. So so that's how you actually uh, putting a formula. So let's let's try a few more. Let's try a few more, more shopping for shopping. Let's uh, let's do like 200. Uh, 15, say, say, 15 for TV, and then 200 for leisure, and then 30 for broadband, 100 for utility, and then 400 for rent, and then now again I'm having exactly the same kind of a problem. So, so what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna just type sum equals two equals two sum b9 colon to b14. So let's take a look at this formula. Is it correct? Equals two. Don't forget about the equals two. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So you have to type equals two. Equals to sum. Sum the function that I want to use. Uh, B nine. B nine is this particular cell, right? B nine. That's uh, shopping, right? And then put to B fourteen. Column means two. B fourteen. B fourteen is rent. So I think that's what I wanted. So, so I'm going to click accept. So it's gonna give me my total expenditure for January, and then for, and then again I'm gonna use the field handle to copy it, to copy the same formula to all my uh, different months, and then for February, I'm gonna have a different amount of uh, shopping thing. I'll give it like 100, and then 15 for TV, leisure. Let's give it like 80 for leisure, and then broadband is still 30, utility is still 100. Rent is still 400, and then my total expenditure for February is like a, a 725. So now let's look at how we can actually compute the difference. How we can I actually compute the difference between my total expenditure, total uh, total income, and uh, total expenditure? So let me let me activate uh, the, this particular cell. It's a B17. B17 equals two. B17 equals to what? Equals to this this particular row. That's uh, B6, right? B6 equals two. Don't forget about B equals two. B6 subtract subtract what? Subtract B15. B15. Is that what I wanted? Just check, and then click on uh, accept. Then it's gonna give me my uh, difference. Again, I want to copy it to all the different uh, uh, months. So for the first month, the difference is positive is 475, and then it's uh, post for the February it's 695. And savings, I want to compute savings from a sort of savings ratio. Suppose, so I want to compute a savings from a savings ratio that I specify at this bo box. Suppose I want to, for every month, I want to save for like a 70 percent, 70 percent, 0.7, 70 percent of the total difference. So I end up 0.7 in here. But if you would like to, if you want to see this number in percentage, you can just uh, click on this button. Then it's going to turn it into a percentage sign. And then I have savings. Savings. How I'm going to enter the formula here? How am I going to enter the form? So, so I'm going to use the difference. Difference is B17, right? B17. And then, sorry, forgot about equals to B17 times times my savings ratio is B20, right? B20. So that's my uh, that's my ratio. So, so, so for for January, I'm, my savings amount is uh, 332.5 dollars. So suppose I still want to copy this thing over the entire, the entire uh, for for to all the months. I can use the fill button to drag it over. But you 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 will notice that it's uh, for for the for the for the, for February the savings amount is incorrect. It's wrong, right? Because uh, 695 times times 70 percent is definitely not zero. If you actually click on this cell, you'll see what's actually the what's actually the the formula. What's actually the formula being used for computing this particular cell? It's C17 times C20. 
So if you click on the general savings button, it's B17 times B20. And then if you if you want to copy a formula to a different cell, it's it's gonna automatically adjust the column number. You see, so instead of using B, you, instead of using a B20 using this particular ratio, the fixed savings ratio, it's actually using C20, and there's no entry in C20 for now. So it's actually taking for granted that C20 has a value of zero. So zero times C17 gives you zero. So in in any kind of spreadsheet, either Excel or this Calc uh, open source uh, spreadsheet handling uh, uh, application, there are two kinds of copy. One is called a relative reference or relative copy. Another one is called absolute reference or a absolute copy. So the default behavior for the Calc spreadsheet software is that it's going to use the, the relative reference. It's going to use the relative reference. So it's automatic, It's going to automatically change the column index based on where you are actually putting the formula. You're copying the formula from the B column to the C column. So it's a relative reference. The default behavior is a relative ref reference. So it's automatically adjusting the column numbers for you. And in this kind of case, how do you actually fix that? What you have to do is to go back to this particular formula. And then B17, you want to keep B17 as a relative reference because uh, for different months, this uh, this uh, this difference B7, this uh, the difference could be different. So for the second month, it should be C17, right? For some, for March, it should be D17. So so you want to keep the first number as the relative reference. But B20 is a fixed number. You want to use absolute reference for the second number. You don't want this number to change based on the different months. So how do you actually specify an absolute reference? You use a dollar sign. You put a dollar sign in front of the column ID, which is B. And then if you want to fix the row, fix the row index also, you put a dollar sign in front of the row. So it's a dollar B dollar 20. And then it's going to use the, the the absolute reference, and then if you click on return accept, then it's going to accept this particular uh, formula. And at this stage, you can actually copy this over to all the other months. And now you can sort of see it's um, for the second month, the savings amount is correct because uh, if you click on this box, it shows that it's C17. The first number is a relative reference, so 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 it's actually automatically changing to the correct column index. And then for the second number, for the second number, it's absolute reference, so it's still dollar B dollar twenty, so it's still using this particular number. And then it's giving you the correct uh, amount. So 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 the important thing to remember is that uh, when you type a formula, you have to sort of uh, remember what. What numbers should be what numbers should be uh, in relative reference and what numbers should be in absolute reference? So the default behavior is actually the relative reference. Now, now let's try to let's try to format our table into a better looking uh, better looking table. So suppose I want to add a separation at this particular row. So what I'm going to do is that. Uh, what I'm going to do is that, uh, sorry, I changed something, so I can just undo it. And so undo it, so it's not gonna. Okay, so so now let's let's try to uh, uh, add some kind of separation on row seven. So how do you do that? First, you right-click on this particular row, and it's gonna give you a bunch of uh, choices, a drawdown menu. Um, some of the some of the they are all useful. For example, if you want to insert a row above it, delete a selected row or something, delete the row contents, right? Hide, show, cut, copy, paste. If you want to format the rows in a different way, but we are going to use the format cells. We're going to use the first entry, format cells. 
and then you have a number of tabs you're going to have a number of tabs uh, we're going to go to the borders tab uh, this borders tab is going to specify what's going to be the what the border are going to look like what the border of this particular row of cell this row are going to look like and then you have um, different uh, kind of a if you move your cursor to a, to the first box here it, it calls set no borders and then set outer borders only so we're going to select the second one set outer borders only and then we're going to do OK and then let's uh, let's uh, let's right click on it again there's a there's a column called a row height there's an option called a row height you can specify the height of the row here for now the default is a 0 0.18 uh, let's uh, give it a small number 0 0.05 and then this row 7 is going to look like a double bar which is going to a double line which is going to act as a separator for us to uh, separate the table into different uh, sections we're going to do the same thing here for for row six, 16 format sales borders click on the second one OK and then we're gonna right click and then row height let's change it to like 0 0.05 and then OK again maybe let's uh, do this for myself for row 17 OK then row height 0 0.05 so now we have added some separators into the table so it will look better if we sort of try to uh, print out the the result so now let's look at uh, uh, one more thing let's look at how do we actually make charts make graphics make uh, make figures out of this kind of data suppose I want to look at my expenditures from month to month so I'll, I'll just uh, select uh, these three columns for my expenditures. I'm gonna drag my mouse in for from column A to column C, including three columns, so A, B, and C. So the first column is gonna act as uh, some kind of a uh, index. So, but I'm skipping the last row, total row. I'm skipping because I want to look at the portions, different portions of different kinds of a. Uh, expenditure for every month and then I'm gonna go to this button it's called a chart and click on it so as soon as you click on it it's gonna give you a bar diagram kind of, kind of column diagram so that's sort of the, the, the default figure type it's called a column and then it's gonna give you column B and column C so different colors different colors for column B and column C and then it's categorized based on the first column the first column you have selected so shopping TV leisure broadband utility rent and uh, this is a kind of a useful uh, figure to look at uh, suppose suppose we want to look at uh, some pi pi plots we can we can we can select a pi and yeah, select pi and then as soon as we selected pi it's going to give you this kind of pi diagram uh, because we have two months we have two different months so we're going to do a donut we're gonna do do a donut diagram. Say there's a donut diagram. So the inside donut, the smaller circle, is gonna be for the first month, I think, and then the outside donut is gonna be the for 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 the, for the second month. To to make the donut donut plot easier to read, you can you can explode it. So the last option is called exploded donut chart. You click on it. And it's going to give you a exploded donut. So let's let's click on. So it's going to give you a relative portion, relative portion of different kinds of uh, expenditures for the two different months. And then, if you are sort of satisfied with the figure, then you can just click on finish. Of course, if you wanna, if you wanna give it a 3D look, you can click click this checkbox. Then it's going to give you a three-dimensional look. Maybe it's uh, what you wanted, but maybe it's uh, not exactly what you. Maybe not so informative or something. And uh, you have uh, two different choices. One is called a symbol. The other one is called a, a realistic. Basically, the shading. The shading is uh, kind of different. So let's click on finish. 
and then this figure can be sort of moved around you can just uh, uh, oh, sorry did I change you can just grab it and then move it to somewhere inside of your uh, text region and then uh, if you are done if you are done with your spreadsheet you can you can you can export it into a PDF file for example but let me just uh, save it it's called it budget and then just to save so on my desktop it's going to give me a PDF file that's uh, showing me the, the the expenditure the budget for the different uh, for the two months one of the one of the one of the very useful thing to look through is this particular button it's called function wizard it's going to give you uh, it's going to give you lots of a uh, uh, lots of functions and uh, sometimes it's quite useful to study what those functions are for if you are for suppose you are actually looking at financial data you are doing a spreadsheet for financial data uh, all those functions are going to be quite useful and uh, some uh, some other some other features are related to, there are lots of other features that's related to, to uh, formatting formatting a particular table for example how do you actually change the look of the different cells how do you actually look at the, uh, how do you change the look of the different uh, separations among different rows and columns and uh, those ca those kind of things can be adjusted uh, based on uh, format or uh, window suppose you want to split the windows into like different, uh, the entire window into like different uh, smaller windows. You can uh, look into that. And uh, so basically, this is a, just a very short, very brief introduction about uh, calc. And uh, it's uh, definitely worth exploring by yourself and looking to more detailed like, tutorials and uh, other kind of sections, um, other kind of uh, uh, teaching guides, uh, studying guides. Now let's look at how we can uh, how we can use a presentation tool called Impress. Um, I have a Impress on my launcher. It's LibreOffice Impress. And if you don't have it on your launcher, you can go to the dash and type uh, Impress. And then click on LibreOffice Impress. It's going to open the LibreOffice Impress with an empty presentation. And uh, it's um, the the menu bar for this application is also is still in the in the panel. So if you move your cursor to the panel, you'll see the all the menu items related to, to Impress. And and then you have a toolbar. You have a toolbar. It's um, it's a toolbar that's quite similar to uh, Rider and also to Calc. Uh, and then you have a certain formatting tools, a, a set of formatting tools. Um, the default behavior is that it's going to open a um, empty presentation in the normal view. So you have a thumbnail, slide thumbnail on the right hand, uh, on the left side of the window under slides, and then the main window is here, and this main window is tabbed. So you have uh, several tabs. Uh, the default behavior is to show you the normal view, and then you also have outline notes, handout, slide, sorter, all those different views. We're going to look at the, all those different tabs later on. And uh, on the right side of the window, uh, you have uh, different kinds of layout for the current slide. So the default is to give you a title slide because it's an empty uh, presentation and uh, and and the uh, impress actually assumes that uh, you are gonna uh, you are you are you are you are you are making the first slide of a presentation, so it's giving you a title slide. Title slide is composed of a title that's on the top, and then some 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 subtitle, author, a date, that kind of information in the in the in the in the in the bottom box. But you can also select other kinds of uh, other other kinds of a uh, uh, layout. For example, if you switch to this. A t uh, with a title and then content, and title with two contents, right? And then center text, title only, uh, title with three contents, 
you can you can you can try out different kind of slide layout and let's go back to the title slide that will that's the default behavior and then on the bottom on the bottom here you have a bunch of bad buttons for you to actually add stuff to your slider so so this will allow you to add lines add rectangles add arrows rectangles ellipses text if you want to add text anywhere in your slide you can just click here and then curves if you want to draw lines on the on the slide and then connectors if you want to uh, draw a flow diagram or something uh, for different components on your slide you want to, you can do that uh, symbol shapes symbols shapes different kind of symbols so all those buttons are useful if you want to sort of uh, come up with a good presentation all those buttons are uh, quite useful so so what might be a good way for us to do a to do a slide to do a pre, uh, to do an example presentation um, we'll start from the outline we'll start from the outline view writing a powerpoint uh, writing a presentation is just like writing a term paper or any kind of a documents you want to start with a uh, rough outline and let's go to let's switch to the outline view as soon as you click on outline you you have a cursor now where you can where you can type text into it and then one this is the first slide it's telling you it's the first last slide and then you can just start typing let's let's um, let's call our presentation how to use ubuntu linux how to use ubuntu uh, linux if you press return now if you press return now the default behavior is that it's going to generate a second slide but that's not exactly what you wanted because you also want to add the author information and other kind of information to it so so what you want to do is to demote to demote to demote the text that you're going to type next so you can click the demote button is here you can click on the demote button or or you can just type the tab key type the tab key if you type the tab key or click on the demote button it's going to stay on the same slide but it's going to be uh, additional text that's demoted so 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 i'm going to type the author information so i say by poaching that's my that's my name uh, so so as you type on it you, on the on the thumbnail you can sort of see what's actually the effect so uh, so impress is actually automatically adding your the t the text that you have typed into the title and also into the stuff that's uh, underneath the title so now now you can type enter but now uh, the if you type enter now it's uh, because it's demoted already so it, it's still assuming that you're gonna type additional content into the same slide but suppose you want to move on to the next slide what you have to do is to promote it promote it promote it now you are you are in the second slide now so let's uh, let's give it some content let's say uh, the title would be installing Ubuntu installing Ubuntu and then just demote it by, by using a tab you can sort of see there's a bullet point in front of it uh, let's say research your hardware because before you install the your Ubuntu on your system you have to know what kind of hardware you're having on your system is it a 64-bit or 32-bit uh, system or so 32-bit or 64-bit usually these days most of the machine are, are 64-bit now so and then you have to plan your partition your disk partition how how do you want to partition your disk do you want to use the whole disk as just one partition or do you want to separate it into multiple partitions the bootloader what do you want the bootloader installing from from dvd or usb and then step by step install and then troubleshooting now promote it the, the key combination is shift hold down the shift key and then tab or you can just use the buttons there use the buttons there so uh, now the unity desktop environment 
cabot so we're gonna do web web apps first we're gonna do web apps first what are the web applications available to the unity desktop environment and then I want to tab again but to demote the text again so I want to talk about different kinds of web apps so I'm gonna talk about browsers I'm gonna talk about email clients talk about instant messaging and video video conference that kind of thing not 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 sort of a watching a movie that kind of thing and then Facebook and Twitter and then promote it and then promote again because I'm done with my web application discussion so uh, and then I'm gonna do something else that's um, uh, the unity desktop environment and then I'm gonna do productivity applica productivity apps and then I'm gonna do intro to library office and then writer sorry typo calc uh, impress and then uh, base math jewel this pretty much covers all the applications in LibreOffice I think and then I'm gonna promote it promote it again I'll do one more slide and that's my last slide this is my the unity desktop environment uh, I'm gonna do multimedia multimedia apps so music how do you listen to music manipulate sounds graphics gra graphics manipulation how do you how do you actually manipulate uh, photos pictures that kind of thing how do you work with digital cameras And then how do we watch movies or videos? How do we record videos, for example? How do you actually record the screencast, that kind of thing? So, so that's pretty much my outline. And you can sort of see the thumbnail here. Thumbnail. So as soon as you have uh, done some editing of your empty um, presentation, you have to save it by using hold down the control key and then S, type S. Or what you can do is to go to the menu bar and then just a uh, just a uh, just select save or save as so I'm gonna save as uh, I'm just to put it uh, I'll put it on my desktop and I'm just, just gonna say Ubuntu unity and then save it so now I have a uh, presentation that's my that stores my 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 work my my work so far and uh, that's the outline view so basically you can type whatever text you want to uh, put into it and it gives you some idea about what's actually the outline and then let's look at the slide sorter if you slick, click on the slide sorter it's gonna give you all the slides that you have um, put together so far and if you want to add more slides for example if you want to add more slides you can right click between those different slides and select new slide then it's gonna add one empty slide here if you want to click on uh, if you want to delete it delete one slide you can just uh, press delete press delete on your keyboard or just uh, uh, right click on it and then sele select the delete slide so 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 the outline doesn't actually pre prevent you from adding new slides to your presentation so you can just uh, use whatever uh, you can you can put as many slides into the presentation as you want so so that's the slide sorter you also have notes notes if you want to add notes to each of the slide uh, it will remind you uh, what to talk about for this particular start slide when you actually give the presentation and if you want to give your presentation to some other people those notes are going to give you give give those uh, give those uh, audience some additional information about what's uh, supposed to be uh, discussed for this particular slide so it will be a very useful uh, tool for you to uh, add notes to it and handout handout is an um, is another quite useful feature so 
uh, when you give, before you actually give the presentation, you can print out those handouts and uh, give it out to to your audience, potential audience. And okay, so now let's uh, let's let's do some editing. Let's do some editing in this slide sorter view. Um, let's try to format our 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 slides better. So let's select two, slide two, and then hold down the shift key, and then click on slide five. Then it's gonna it's gonna select it's gonna select automatically select all the slides from two two to five. If you wanna select just a uh, a few slides, for example, you wanna select slide two, and then slide four, for example, you hold down the control key, and then click on slide four. Then it's gonna just select slide two and four. So shift key and uh, control key allows you to select multiples, multiple units. So this is also true in calc if you want to select multiple uh, cell in the spreadsheet or if you want to select multiple text in, 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 in writer. So you can use the shift and the control key, this kind of combination uh, for you to, uh, to, to control your selections. So, so now let's select, let's hold down the shift key and select two and five. And then we are selecting all the uh, all the slides except for the first one. And now let's change the layout. We're going to change our layout from title one content to title two content. So so all we have to do is to in, under the properties layout we can just uh, click on this thing. If you if you don't have the properties tab open, all you have to do is to click on this thing. Click on this icon. It's gonna g take you to the properties tab, and then you can just uh, uh, click on the title with two content. It's gonna give you the uh, some kind of a reformatted, uh, reformatted the slides. So now let's let's go to uh, installing Ubuntu, the, the second slide, and you can just double click on it, or just select it, or and then go to normal view, and you can sort of see you have the text that's on the left hand side. And then you have an empty space on the right hand side which allows you to insert tables, insert charts. So tables, charts, all of them can come from uh, calc, LibreOffice calc, an image, and then movie clips. So for demonstration purposes we're just going to insert an image, or just insert an image. And then uh, it's going to ask me to uh, select an image, I'm going to install, uh, I'm going to select this image. And then it's giving me uh, an, a random image that I grabbed from the internet. So it's basically one of the installation windows if you try to install uh, uh, Ubuntu on your system. So we can just try to adjust the size of the image by grabbing the one of the by 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 using by using the mouse. So 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 the default behavior is that you will see green boxes, those green boxes, small green boxes surrounding the image and you can manipulate them by manipulate the image by dragging those uh, green boxes so suppose you want to make it bigger make it longer if you want to move it you can just uh, grab the grab anywhere on the image make it taller and if you want to sort of if you if you if you click on the image again you sort of see the green boxes actually has turned into red dots this allows you to rotate the image. So it's going to allow you to rotate the image. Allow you to shift uh, shear the image. You can sort of see how how the different dots actually behave. If I want to go back to the green boxes, I can just uh, click on it again. Then I'm going back to the green boxes. So you have two different modes for editing images. But this is not exactly what I wanted, so I I'll just undo the effect. Undo the effect. You have the undo button here, or by, by just using Control Z. So I'm going back to the uh, to my previous uh, version of the of the of the figure or of the picture. So so let's try to let's let's Control S. Let's just store it. Let then let's move on to the next slide and add one more picture to it. So this is. Uh, 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 
this is a desktop environment. I'm gonna give you a, a put on image of the desktop environment actually. So, and then in addition to this this general desktop environment, a picture of the general desktop environment, I'm gonna uh, put a few more images down there. One of the images for uh, Firefox, for example, I'll just grab them from my desktop. It's an, an image for the Firefox working on the Ubuntu, and then an image of Skype working on the Ubuntu, and then one more image, one more image for Facebook, Facebook Messenger working on the Ubuntu. So I have three images that's uh, uh, sitting at the bottom of the slide. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next one and add one more image. This is for what? This is for productivity tools, LibreOffice. So I'm going to uh, put an image of LibreOffice working on Ubuntu. So LibreOffice is open source and uh, it has different versions. Uh, it can work on the Windows also. It can also, also work on the Mac. And... Uh, uh, this is a particular. This is a particular window for LibreOffice working on the uh, Ubuntu. So, and then the last uh, last one. I'm gonna add one more image to it. It's gonna be uh, mult multimedia. So this is actually an image of a three-dimensional movie editing or movie di uh, animation making software. It's called a, a Blender. It's an open source and uh, 3D animation maker called Blender. So it's one of the images from screenshots from from blender actually adjust it a little bit okay so that's um, so we have added some images to to the slides now let's try to add transitions to the slides once you actually have uh, once you start to give the presentation you would like to have uh, some kind of transition between your slides so so let's go back to the slide sorter. Let's save it at first, and then go back to the slide sorter. And then Control A is going to select all the slides. And then we are going to apply the transition effect to all the slides. So on the right hand side, uh, you have a property. That's the button for bring up the property. Uh, master page, we're going to look at the master page later. Custom and animation, we're going to look at the custom animation later. And then you have a button that's called a slide transition. So let's click on the slide transition. For now, the default is no transition. But there's uh, lots of uh, different effects, different effects. So we're gonna have uh, we're gonna use a uh, or choose flipping tiles. So once you actually clicked on the effect, it's gonna show you a preview. And what you wanna do is to uh, what you wanna do is to sort of click on this automatic preview button. If this this box is not checked, it's not going to give you the preview, so if I uncheck it, it's not going to give me any kind of preview. If I check it, it's going to give me a preview. So it has lots of uh, different kinds of effects. I'll just, uh, I'll just uh, select a, a random one, flipping tiles, I'll just use flipping tiles. And then uh, there's uh, some specifications that you can modify underneath so modify transition modify transition you have a speed how fast you want it to be you can you can do fast let's do fast actually let's do and then sound the default behavior is that there's no sound advanced slide based on mouse click or automatically after a, f a number of seconds so let's just uh, click automatically after not one second let's just uh, in Increase it to like five seconds or something. So and then apply to all slide. So at this stage, you have some set up some transition. If you want to look at a slideshow, it's gonna. Uh, you can advance the slideshow by by just pressing the pressing the arrow key. So the transition looks fine. Looks fine. Let's uh, let's uh, 
let's look at the master the master pages button so let's let's again select all control a select all and then switch to the master pages so 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 this master pages pen actually allows you to select a particular theme for your uh, presentation you can there's a there's a bunch down there you can try them out and see which one is the uh, best fit or or you can try, try to sort of come up with your own master page or, mo or your own theme that kind of thing so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna select this one last screen and uh, it looks fine to me so I'm gonna just uh, stick with this last screen again save it, save it. If you want to sort of take a look at the, your slideshow, you can. There's a menu item that's called a slideshow. If you click on it, you have multiple choices. Start from the first slide, start from custom slide, a uh, current slide, and then you can just uh, click start from first slide. So. <coughs> So on this particular slide, I sort of see some kind of overlap between my figures and the text. So I'm going to go to the normal view to to make some changes. Uh, uh, one thing that I can do is to shift my text box uh, box a little bit to the left. So the, the the figure doesn't cover my text. And then I'm going to add some animations. I'm going to add some animations to to the three figures in the bottom. Um, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to sort of uh, I'm going to do a flying effect or something for, for the three figures in the bottom. Uh, so how do you actually do that? First, you have to select the picture that you want to apply animations on. For now, let's click on the first small figure, and then there's a there's a button that's called anima custom animation. Let's just uh, click on custom animation. For now, there's nothing in it, but it's actually telling you first to select a slide element and then click Add to add an animation effect. So it's asking me to click select a slide element. The slide element selected is this particular figure, and then click Add to add an animation effect. Add it comes here. The so Add effect. If I click on it, it's gonna it's gonna give me some kind of a dialog box that that's that's allowing me to to select different uh, effects. So what I'm going to do is that uh, I, I'll just use flying. So as soon as I select flying, it's going to do a preview for me. Uh, speed very fast. You can customize it very slow, slow, medium, or, uh, or and you have an automatic preview, right? And then that's uh, that's that. That's this particular figure. I'll, I'll just do OK. Uh, for now, uh, for this particular effect, you have uh, you have a uh, you have an effect flying start on click, but you don't have to sort of click your mouse to 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 ask this uh, picture to fly in. You can just uh, uh, make it automatic. Sort of after previous, you can just select after previous. So whatever is pre whatever is uh, is uh, is uh, applied on on the previous uh, effect, then it's gonna start after previous. Direction from bottom, you can ask it from to to fly in from from other some other places, and there's a box here. There's a button here. You can click on it. Uh, so, so so enhancement, for example, enhancement, you, you can apply a sound to it, for example, aperture or something. Uh, so so as the as the picture flies in, it's gonna play a sound or something. So. Uh, And then let's do the second figure. We're gonna do the same kind of thing. We're gonna add and then fly in. And then just OK. And then down on click after previous. Uh, I think that's it. And then the last figure, let's uh, let's uh, let's add one more fly in. OK. And then down after previous for bottom very fast. Uh, so okay, so let's let's take a look at take a look at the animation effect. We can do slideshow and then start from current slide. Then it's gonna fly in. So, uh, 
so so one more thing one more thing let's let's go to the first slide let's go to the first slide sometimes people want to add the date sometimes people want to add the date and also add the page number of the slide at the bottom at the bottom so you can do that by go to the insert menu and then you have an option that's called date and time you can click on it and then it's going to give you a uh, a selection a dialog box so include on slide date and time fixed fixed means that uh, the data is going to be fixed on the first time that you generate the slides uh, and then variable i want to i want to if you do variable then it's going to uh, uh, it's gonna the data is gonna change every time you actually open it and make modifications to it so so let's let's try variable and then uh, and then let's specify the format the format of the date and then it's gonna be added to the footer and also I want to add the slide number to the footer so so if you click on apply to all all those changes are going to be applied to all the slides. Uh, for some reason, I'm not getting the dates correct. So, oh, so so the dates is added. Now you have a, a quite a complete uh, presentation for for this particular topic that's um, that might be interesting to you guys. Um, of course, there's lots of uh, capability inside of the Impress application. It's a it's a very capable application. The the its capability is comparable to Microsoft PowerPoint, and it will take some time for you to uh, really learn and really master this particular software. What I have been doing is just trying to show you the entry point for 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 you to explore by yourself. So. What's actually quite important is the menu bar here, right? And lots of the lots of the capability are embedded in this menu bar. So, so suppose you wanna suppose suppose you wanna add more text. Suppose you wanna add more text to this thing, to this particular slide. You can click on this button, and then click anywhere. Then you can type text, and then it's gonna give you a text box that you can actually move around. If you want to delete it, you just press delete key. And if you want to uh, do some other manipulations to images, to text, so suppose you want to uh, select all, all of them and then change it to bullet points. Change the bullet points, you can sort of uh, change the style of the bullet points. You can give it some number. Then it's going to it's going to give you a number list. smaller bullet points that kind of thing that kind of effects so uh, basically that's a, a very elementary introduction to impress now let's look at some of the multimedia applications that can run in Ubuntu so let's look at the sound applications or music applications first um, if you go to the panel I, I was showing you there is a button there's an icon that allows you to adjust the sound. The, for example, to adjust the volume of the sound. This is a, this is a, your volume adjuster. And uh, um, if you go to the end of the menu bar, if you go to the end of the draw, draw down, drop down menu, you have a sound settings. It's gonna open a, a dialog box that allows you to make adjustment to sound settings. For example, how do, what's your output sound? What's your output device for sound and then what's the input device for sound in this case I'm actually using a microphone that's a Logitech wireless headset and uh, sound effects applications so you can make adjustment to sounds um, of course of course it depends upon your uh, sound card your, your sound card has to be compatible with Ubuntu so you can make these kind of uh, uh, adjustments and have effects on your sound um, if you would like to listen to music on Ubuntu, there are lots of music applications available in the software center. And the buildings, the building, uh, the building uh, music listener is called 
uh, it's called reason box so if I type RHY it's gonna show you uh, the reason box music player that's sort of the that's sort of the building uh, music player with a bundle <coughs> if you open it <coughs> it shows you <coughs> some of the uh, some of the diagrams that's um, some of the uh, some of the music sources that you can actually listen to music from um, so uh, for now I, I myself don't really have any music stored on this particular machine uh, but uh, this application is actually quite good it can show cover arts it can show you how uh, it have it has a very good control about the playback uh, you can adjust volumes and uh, uh, you can also import video uh, import vi uh, music uh, from 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 your disk um, there's also another quite good quite good music player it's called Benshi uh, Benshi music uh, media player and it's also available in the software center so if you this one is not automatically included with the Ubuntu operating system so if you want to install this media player you can go to a software center and then just uh, find it and then install it uh, uh, this one also allows you to play playback music uh, music and also videos so you can also t listen to a radio. It has in it's integrated with Amazon MP3 store, so you can sort of purchase music from from those uh, store. Uh, so 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 that's uh, that's uh, that's two music players you can use to listen to music, and. Um, for graphic manipulation, you have two quite important, uh, quite important graphic application. One is called the GNU or GNU Image Manipulation Program or GIMP, which is uh, this particular application, GIMP Image Editor, and uh, uh, it is sort of the open source equivalent of Adobe Photoshop. If you have used Photoshop before, you you will feel familiar about the particular interface of GIMP, and uh, this is actually a very powerful image editing uh, application. And uh, I, I I won't be able to do a very detailed tutorial about GIMP, uh, but you can find very detailed applications, a uh, detailed tutorials on the web. GIMP has a very good uh, website. It's uh, www.gimp.org and then slash tutorials, and you will be able to find uh, very good tutorials that's sort of separated into the beginner level, intermediate level, and expert level, and then photo editing, web, script authoring. Uh, all those tutorials are very well written, and uh, you can use that as a study guide to to learn. GIMP. If you have a, uh, if you have a, a image that you need to edit, and uh, this is sort of the Photoshop, the open source version of the Photoshop, and there's also another application that's um, image editing application that's vectorized, a vector image editing application. It's called a Inkscape. It's a ve vector ve graphic uh, graphics editor, so it is sort of the open source equivalent of the Adobe uh, Illustrator. And uh, uh, the interface is also quite similar to Adobe, actually, if, uh, to, to to Illustrator, actually. So, but the but but there are differences. There are uh, there are lots of differences, of course, and uh, this is also a very well developed application with lots of documentations. So if you actually go to the web, to go to uh, the Inkspace uh, web page, it's basically Inkscape.org, and then you can find tutorials, very extensive tutorials, and very well written tutorials. Of course, you can also go to YouTube and look for video tutorials about GIMP and Inkscape. Both both graphic software takes some time to master. It's uh, um, uh, it 
depends upon depends upon how how how, how familiar you are you are with those uh, tools and also your creativity how how good you are sort of handling graphic stuff um, so I, I myself won't won't be able to sort of talk about uh, these two applications in detail but uh, you can find external uh, tutorials to, uh, to that gives a very good uh, uh, study guide if you want to capture screenshots if you want to capture screenshots static screenshots you have an application that's just called a screenshot and that's included with Ubuntu and you can find uh, screenshots in your dash also uh, it will allow you to grab the whole screen any kind of active window and or any area on the desktop and uh, once you have made a screenshot you can edit those uh, graphics in those two graphic tools one is uh, GIMP the other one is Inkscape so you can you can make uh, changes to those uh, uh, screen captured images and if you want to manage photos if you want to manage photos there's a there's a Ubuntu building application that's called Shotwell it's a it's a photo manager so if you open Shotwell uh, it will it will you can you can manage you can manage all your photos into events for example you can sort of manage them into events and then uh, folders uh, there are various ways for you to uh, manage your photos also it's called a short wheel and uh, it should be included with the Ubuntu operating system if it is not you can always find it on, in, the, in the software center so if you want to watch videos on Ubuntu operating system you have uh, also have lots of applications that allows you to do that the 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 default application is called a totem totem movie player so if you go to if you go to the dash type totem and then it gives you th this particular video player and uh, the video player one of the things about a video player is that the uh, uh, codex codex you have a uh, different kind of formats that you have to deal with and the video formats is like uh, there are there are a lot of video formats and another quite good video playback software is called VLC. It's called VLC. So it's called VLC Media Player. Uh, this one is not automatically included in the Ubuntu operating system, but you can al always find it in the software center. Um, the VLC, the strength of the VLC player is that it has uh, lots of video playback formats that it can recognize, and uh, uh, it can playback almost everything and uh, if if uh, if there's a video that VOC cannot play it's probably because uh, that video has uh, has has problems it's not because of the application so VOC is actually a very good video player and uh, uh, with uh, with lots of formats so basically that's uh, that's uh, that's a few multimedia uh, multimedia applications that might be useful uh, if you decide to uh, use uh, use Linux or Ubuntu as your primary desktop application environment um, in future videos we're gonna focus on command line tools and how we can actually make the most out of command line tools which which is actually uh, very powerful and uh, we also we will also talk about the shell scripting and uh, we'll talk about the Perl and Python, these scripting languages, and then we'll talk about uh, a compiled programming language like C, C++, and Fortran. And then we'll talk about uh, the message passing library, how to use MPI to write parallel programs, and we'll give some examples. Uh, basically, that's uh, that's pretty much everything for this particular video.